Uh, Mrs May is off to uh, Berlin and uh, Paris today to meet her German and French counterparts in a last-ditch attempt to secure support uh, for uh, an extension ahead of tomorrow's emergency EU summit, which I mean to discuss that, are the uh, French journalist and broadcaster Nabila Ramdami and the uh, correspondent uh, for the German newspaper Die Welt and author Thomas Keelinger, new book out there, uh, Die Königin, about uh, Elizabeth I. Yeah. Right. Now, what sort of reception is uh, President Macron going to give Mrs May, do you think? Well, I think if you speak to the French, they certainly have the impression that uh, Mrs May will be visiting Mr Macron with cap in hand. Uh, the Prime Minister is viewed in France as a well-mannered and um, even rather humble English woman. But I think on this occasion, this will sadly uh, count against her. And there's, of course, uh, you know, a lot of brinkmanship involved on, on, on both sides. But uh, clearly, Mr. Macron has the upper hand. He's uh, has got an arrogance about him, which is considered, um, uh, you know, qu um, a good thing about uh, French presidents uh, who are traditionally very regal. But in contrast, Mrs. May is seen as someone who has very little power and uh, dare I say, pretty hopeless uh, uh, negotiating skills. And this is not nothing to do with impressions, but facts. I mean, she's failed to get her deal through Parliament three times. And she's clearly seen as a soft touch by men like Michel Barnier. And um, uh, I think she'll be in a very weak position when she speaks to Mr Macron this evening. What does um, Angela Merkel think of Mrs May? Well, Angela Merkel, like most Germans, finds it impossible to contemplate that the the, the attempt to resolve the uh, in Westminster took until the very last week, that is to say, talks between the government and the opposition. To Germany, this is un unconscionable to think that you can't find a way earlier in the, in the negotiations to talk and solve things. But then Germany comes from a coalition-making yeah. culture. And, and we have to understand that Britain is a more confrontational sort of political country. And, and, I mean, does she share the lack of respect of uh, no. President Macron for, she, for no, Mrs. She May. has respect, but she's, she's saddened by what's happened because we don't really want to lose Britain oh. as a partner in Europe. Britain and, and, and Germany share many um, um, similar goals, free trade and anti-authoritarianism, anti anti-protectionism and so forth. So we are trying to, to help her along but I, I think the, 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 the um, um, formulation that Barnier used uh, for the visit, they, they'll give Mrs May a chance to show the way forward. It's a wonderful way of putting it. Um, the, the, the ball is in the British court. It's not for the UK, for the EU rather, to, to sort of map out uh, the, the way forward. You have to wait for a proposal coming from Mrs May. But there, I mean, last time there was a proposal from Mrs May and the European Union, after six hours of talks, came up with something completely different. Mm -hmm. This time there is an alternative proposal there, which is the one from Tusk, talking about a long delay, a so-called flex tension. Is that something Macron could go for? Well, I think Macron is likely to agree to extensions to Article 50 uh, because in the long term he uh, sees it as the best way of scuppering but of a year, the entire Brexit. Potentially of a, year, of a year's length, do you think? Well, I, I think uh, you know, Macron has made his position about Brexit very clear very early on. I mean, the main reason why he has adopted such a staunch stance against uh, in the Brexit negotiations is because he's an arch enemy of the entire Brexit project. And what this shows is that the EU and particularly its founding fathers, uh, France and Germany, are very much in the driving seat. And May's visits to uh, Germany and France are an obvious example of this. But I think, you know, more pragmatically, Mr Macron will be fully aware that uh, Mrs May is not coming to refine a sophisticated exit strategy, but to buy time to formulate a muddled compromise with Corbyn, if it comes to that. And I don't think he'll be too impressed by that. And I suspect Angela Merkel uh, will feel the same way, uh, precisely because uh, Britain uh, has uh, asked to leave the club, as it were, mm. and in a... Um, an almost ridiculous development. He's now asking, he's now pleading yeah. to stay in the club for a period of time that could be indefinite. And I think people are yeah. rather uh, legitimately feel angry and upset about it. But, I mean, yeah. Tusk has talked about, you know, time for a rethink right. by, by the UK. Well, we know Tusk where he comes from. He's an ardent um, admirer of British history. <clears throat> he likes Churchill, he likes British political culture, and he's terribly grieved 
about the whole Brexit course. So he's trying everything to lure Britain back into the common fold. The problem, of course, is the European elections will, to me, the May, by the extended period, on condition that Britain takes part in the European... Well, she's already in enacting uh, preparations. She's enacting preparations which will lead to an uproar in her own party. So there is an, a question mark over her own head as leader of her party. And the whole thing is really in tatters. Three days before Britain is supposed to be leaving the Union, we yeah. do not have a clear indication where we will be ending up next weekend. Now, but is there actually a division between France and Germany in the sense that uh, when uh, Macron met with the Chinese, he invited Merkel along? Mm. But on this question of Brexit, on the question of a neighbour, Mrs May is clearly going to both capitals and, and, and is looking for, for well, a difference. If there's a crack in the, in the unanimity between the two countries, I'm sure she's hoping to see that emerge. Uh, and certainly uh, Germany is far more Britain-friendly than is by nature, than is France. The thought that we will be left in Europe with France as our main partner to guide the Union along is quite uh, reprehensible to our feeling. We want to keep Britain on board far more than the French, I'm sure. Well, I, I think one has to bear in mind that Macron is also playing to a domestic audience. You know, he's uh, conscious of upcoming parliamentary elections, in, uh, European parliament elections. And, of course, he's got his own plan for to reform the EU. He, for example, wants, uh, you know, a, a joint Eurozone budget and he wants a coordinated EU economic policy implemented by uh, uh, an EU finance minister. And he sees Brexit as a distraction from implementing those... Uh, no, on those for that, you no, on those points, I'm glad you mentioned all these pl plans that Macron has, Germans are not seeing eye to eye with that. We are totally against more closer integration in Europe. In fact, the ever closer union is off the table, Adam. Nobody talks about the ever closer union like Macron seems to be dreaming about it. We have begun to realise that there are nascent national patriotisms in Europe which we need to take care of rather than superimposing ever more supernatural traffic. When Brexiteers continue to this day to, to claim that Europe is heading the way of a supernatural natural edifice, it's all wrong. But, the, but that is what uh, Macron is talking about, though, isn't it? Well, absolutely. But uh, having said that, in the end, I think Macron is a very pragmatic uh, politician and a very conciliatory one at that. And I think that a very short-term and hollow victory against the British would be hugely uh, risky for him. I mean, a suggestion um, in some quarters that he, given the political pressures at home, he might go for a, a short-term, you know, stick two fingers up to Le Ros Biff and all that, and, and that will be popular at home. Uh, I don't think so. I think, you know, the novelty, certainly, of his En Marche movement, which brought him to power, yeah. is, is wearing thin, no doubt about it, especially following humiliations with the Yellow Vest uh, movements at home. And, yes, his uh, poll figures, uh, uh, poll, uh, his rating figures are recovering. He's on around 29%. Uh, and that's not bad for a first-term president but he certainly wants his party to do well at, at the upcoming elections. And I've noticed, um, you know, uh, predictable comparisons with Charles de Gaulle any time the yeah. French uh, president tries to assert himself, especially in regards uh, to Europe. And, uh, the, you know, the, 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 um, um, predictably, you know, this is happening now, and British MPs are speaking about Macron's uh, de Gaulle moment, as it were. Bizarrely, it's a reverse situation this time. Instead of de Gaulle wanting, you know, to keep Britain out of the European economic community, we have Macron expressing extreme frustration at Britain wanting out uh, of the EU. And I really can't see Mr Macron wanting to go down in history as the president forcing Britain out of the EU against uh, the wishes of, of Parliament. Uh, uh, but, you know, in this climate, okay. <laughs> anything is possible. Yeah, yeah. We shall see you in uh, Paris tonight and Brussels tomorrow. Thank you both very much indeed.